And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Arlicosaurus. It was a Therizinosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia, found in the Bayan Shira Formation. And we're talking about it today because it appears in Jurassic World the game and in Jurassic World Alive. And as we know, Jurassic World Dominion is coming up out in a few weeks. And in those games, it has fur-like feathers, which is cool because its body probably was covered in feathers. Erlikosaurus also had a bulky body with a small head, large claws, and long tail. Much like other Therizinosaurs. And I mean, you said it has a small head. I guess it depends what you're comparing it to because they sort of had a long, horsey head. (laughs) That's how I think of them, at least. Almost like an anteater in a way, (laughs) sort of like elongated head. Definitely bigger proportionally than something like a sauropod. Right, but for a Therizinosaur, it was kind of small. Okay. Now, the reason we think its body was probably covered in feathers is based on preserved feather impressions found on other Therizinosaurus, Baypiosaurus and Giangchangosaurus. Erlikosaurus is estimated to have been 11 feet or 3.4 meters long and weigh between 330 to 550 pounds or 150 to 250 kilograms. That's so heavy for that length. Yeah. I'm so used to dinosaurs that are 11 feet long weighing like 40 pounds or something, (laughs) (laughs) maybe a couple hundred pounds. But yeah, almost a quarter ton there. That's like... Their xenosaurs were weird. I mean, they had such short tails that they're, that's a lot of mass in between the front and end compared to things that have a really long neck and a long tail. Mm. Okay, compared to other dinosaurs, it had a short tail. But compared to other animals, it was still kind of a long tail. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right, we disagree there. <laughs> Our Ligosaurus had a large humerus, about 12 inches or 30 centimeters long. It had strong arms with long claws. Oh, yeah, extremely long claws. Yep. It had a backwards-directed pelvis. It also had claws on its feet, possibly for self-defense. It had four toes on each foot. Yeah, and its backwards-directed pelvis is really weird because it's a theropod, and theropods usually have the forward face because they're Sarisciians, right? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have the lizard hips with the (laughs) forward-facing pubis, but no, it goes the other way. Again, therizinosaurs are a strange group. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And one of the theories on that is that they had big guts to digest the plants, so then that hip ended up rotating the other direction. Yes, exactly. Another thing that makes it kind of weird, this herbivorous theropod. Mm -hmm. Now, Arlicosaurus had claws on its feet, possibly for self-defense, and it had four toes in each foot. (laughs) That's funny to say that it had claws on its feet for self-defense when it had huge claws on its hands. Yeah. Like, does it really need to involve the feet when it's got such massive claws on its hands? Well, that's why it's possibly for (laughs) self-defense. Well, it does have four toes, which is super weird, again, for Mm -hmm. a theropod. So maybe, yeah, maybe it got an extra toe because it was kicking stuff all the time and that extra claw helped. Could be. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It's just random speculation. It also had a somewhat long snout and a somewhat long brain. And it had this enlarged forebrain, which might have helped it with evading predators and helped it with being more social. Its olfactory tract was much larger than the brain, so it had a pretty good sense of smell and good hearing. It also had good balance. Erlikosaurus fossils were found in 1972 during a Soviet-Mongolian expedition, and they included a well-preserved skull, a nearly complete right foot, and a nearly complete left humerus. Uh, Other fossils were found, too, including fragmentary cervical vertebrae. Also known as neck vertebrae. Mm Mm-hmm. Erlikosaurus was described in 1980 by Pearl and Barsbold, and the type species is Erlikosaurus andrusi. The genus name means Ehrlich's lizard. (laughs) Yep. And it refers to Ehrlich, quote, the Lamaist deity, king of the dead, end quote. Wow. That's quite a title. Yeah. And the species name, Andrew's Eye, is in honor of Roy Chapman Andrews. Ehrlichosaurus is the second Therizinosaur found in the Bayan Shire Formation. And they found a very complete skull. The skull's been described as, quote, unquote, remarkably uncrushed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Remarkably uncrushed. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's a problem with Therizinosaurus skulls then. That's a problem with skulls in general. The holotype skull is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters long. 
Then it was interesting. In 1981, a year after Ehrlichosaurus was named, Pearl named and described Ehrlichosaurus again as if it hadn't been done already, but he spelled it a little bit differently. He spelled Mm. it with a C instead of with a K. So most scientists consider Ehrlichosaurus with a K to be the valid spelling, since that was the first spelling. Yeah, that's all I've ever seen. That's super weird. Mm Mm-hmm. Ehrlichosaurus was the first Therizinosaur, and back in 1980 when it was named, Therizinosaurs were called Segnosaurs, and it was the first one where a complete skull was found, and that helped paleontologists learn a lot more about this group. So back in the 1970s, early 1980s, Segnosaurs, now Therizinosaurs, were thought to not be dinosaurs. Because they're they're very strange. <laughs> yeah. Like why do they why would it have four toes and the hips go in the other way, but also be an herbivore and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. But then in nineteen seventy, Roj Desvensky suggested they were theropods. And in nineteen eighty, therizinosaurs were thought to be slow and semi aquatic. Huh. But then more therizinosaurs were found and they were seen to be more theropod like. James Clark and others in 1994 re-described the Ehrlichosaurus skull and found the features to be consistent with the idea that Therizinosaurus were theropods as well. In 2010, Gregory Paul suggested that Ehrlichosaurus was synonymous with Enigmasaurus, and Enigmasaurus was named in 1983. They were found in the same formation, and only pelvic fossils were found for Enigmasaurus, but no pelvis has been found for Ehrlichosaurus. Mm, So you can't compare them. Yes, so not everybody agrees with this. Enigmasaurus is a cool name, and it actually sounds kind of like Ehrlichosaurus. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. The two species were also found in different parts of the formation, the upper and lower boundary. And the hip of Enigmasaurus looked very different from a close relative to Ehrlichosaurus, Segnosaurus. So that's another reason why not everybody agrees. As we mentioned, Ehrlichosaurus was herbivorous and had this large gut to process food. It also had a well-developed keratinous beak and teeth in its jaws, and it could crop plants and strip leaves off of branches. A study in 2013 by Stefan Lautenschlager and others CT scanned the skull of Ehrlichosaurus and found that the beak helped stabilize its skull while it was eating, which would have made the skull less likely to bend or get deformed. Before this study, beaks were thought to have replaced teeth to make the head lighter and eventually help with flight, just in general, not Ehrlichosaurus specifically. That's not a great way to look at evolution because we knew beaks evolved on animals that didn't look like they could fly at all. And there isn't the sort of preference towards the final form. Like you can't post hoc rationalize why something evolved something like it knew it it's great 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 whatever <laughs> yes. descendant was gonna want to fly so it evolved this beak which would be useful in this way later form right like, so that's not how it works no and in this case you know beaks can be used for other purposes like helping with eating yep a 2021 study by fion Weisema and others digitally modeled and simulated over 40 theropod jaws from five groups that included Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, also Ornithomimosaurs, Therizinosaurs, and Oviraptorosaurs. And they found that theropods evolved to have more structurally stronger jaws to eat tougher food. The jaws, they would get more stable when they're biting, and then they were less likely to have bone fractures. There are dislocations because they have that joint in their jaw too. So that's also helpful. Yeah. And they found that the jaws became stronger in both carnivores and herbivores. Hmm. Theropods, yeah. And Ehrlichosaurus had downward bending jaws that could help relieve stress when cropping plants. It did, however, have a relatively weak bite force compared to other theropods, which maybe you'd expect it being herbivorous and all. Yeah, because the plants don't struggle while you're biting them. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) In 2012, Steven Lautenschlager found that Ehrlichosaurus, the bite force, was low compared to other theropods and in relation to its body mass. However, Komodo dragons tend to have weak bite forces for their size. Having the keratinous beak, though, for Ehrlichosaurus, that would have been an advantage because it's always growing, so it could quickly repair fractures. Interesting. Never thought of that as an advantage of a beak before. Yeah, me either. 
Then a 2015 study by Stephen Lautenschlager and others digitally modeled and analyzed muscle strain for three theropods when they were opening their jaws. They looked at Arlicosaurus, Allosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus, and they also compared them to crocodiles and birds. And the muscles that open and close jaws, they can only stretch so much before tearing, and that plays a role into what an animal can eat. Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, they found, could open up to 90 degrees, while Arlicosaurus was only about 45 degrees. Oh, that's not that much. No. And modern carnivores usually can open their jaws wider than herbivores. Hmm. Arlicosaurus lived alongside another Therizinosaur, Segnosaurus, but they probably filled their own niches. Arlicosaurus was much smaller than Segnosaurus. Segnosaurus was about 20 to 23 feet or 6 to 7 meters long versus Arlicosaurus, which was around 11 feet, 3.4 meters long. So about half. Yeah. And then much less than half if you did by weight, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And Segnosaurus also had different teeth from Arlicosaurus. Arlicosaurus had symmetrical teeth, and Segnosaurus had these complex features with serrations and cutting edges and could probably eat tougher vegetation. Arlicosaurus, again, it probably used its beak and then the muscles in its neck to crop plants, and it probably processed all that food in its gut. Whereas Segnosaurus probably processed its food more with its jaws and teeth. Yeah, that's how we always imagine it, because that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. But when you have a gizzard full of rocks, you can just swallow the food in large chunks and chew it once it gets in your stomach, basically. <laughs> At least some of them could. I don't think there's been gastrolis found with any Arlicosaurus specimens. Mm. But they're ancestors, mm. some of them. Now, Arlicosaurus lived in a semi-arid climate with lakes and rivers, and other animals that lived around the same time and place, in addition to Segnosaurus, included... Tyrannosaurs, Ceratopsians, Hadrosaurs, Ornithomimosaurs, Troodontids, Pterosaurs, and fish. 